My game has no combat, but it does have enemies. It's just that, rather than fighting them, the main challenge is to master the controls and maneuver through the levels. Chase sequences are great for movement based games because they allow you to test all the skills that the player has learned while being under high pressure. So I made one. Well I made two but let's talk about the first one, Giant Snake. Now there is an in game reason for why this exists, but the real world reason is that it's a reference to a character from another game which is a reference back to mine. The first challenge I had when it came to making an enemy like this was moving the body. A common technique that I've seen in games is to split the body into spheres, but I wanted to keep the shape of the snake. So I drew a repeatable vertical slice and stitched it together multiple times for the body. When the head moves up or down I use linear interpolation so that the slices move vertically and smoothly align to the head. The head has two frames. In one, the mouth is closed, and in the other, it's open. I switch between them depending on the distance between the snake and the player. This all worked, but I soon came across my next challenge. When moving through walls, I thought that the snake looked a little odd since there were three walls there. I wanted the body to at least react to the walls. The solution I came up with was to have a ray cast below the snake to detect for walls. And if a wall is detected, then I move the first slice of the body up a little. Since every slice lurps the next slice, they all end up following each other. It isn't perfect, but I'm happy with how it looks. To make the snake start and stop chasing the player, I use my behavior map. When the player enters these areas, the snake's methods are triggered. The other enemy works pretty similarly, with a few differences. So in conclusion, 